We are working toward the end products being secure, being connected, being immovable, and being attractive. I just think they're ready now, this Western Bulldog side. I'm pretty bullish and think that uh, they should be challenging. They can win the flag this year. So it's totally unraveled for the Western Bulldogs. Luke Beveridge has got more thinking to do. To the Bulldogs, who have had a disastrous start to the season. I think it's more the nature of the, the losses that have, have got everyone up in arms. I think we need to, to strip things back. Basic sort of skills and fundamentals. I think that's where it's got to for the Bulldogs. Their effort. Can you just bring effort? which is an indictment on a team. You come in with a belief that you can you can be there, so we don't waver from that. Our ambition is obviously to be one of the better teams year on year. Uh, I still believe we absolutely can be. It's like he's got this great shiny sports car that he just doesn't know what petrol to put in it. He's got everything that he needs. Too many things that Luke does that just, I don't think it gives players confidence in themselves. My fear is that they are wasting a great list. So you think that's on the coach? 100% that's on the coach. You've got to maximise what you've got. We're um, below the, the upper rung at the moment and we've got to keep pursuing trying to get up there. I'm not sure how much further evidence the Western Bulldogs board needs not to sit down and have some serious discussions about the coach at the end of the year. Uh, it's a little bit of trepidation, you know, really. I'm on edge about how the game's going to start and, and getting momentum and I think the boys are as well. And it's a nightmare for the Western Bulldogs! Their destiny is out of their hands. Sometimes you just you need to evolve, and but from a leadership perspective and coaching the, the team and the club, yeah, I'm really comfortable with my, uh, my tenure. The looming drama around the Western Bulldogs coach Luke Beveridge leads the show tonight. Good evening, welcome to Footy Classified. Three coaching stories in the news tonight with Beveridge, Adam Simpson's peculiar future and Damien Hardwick franked at the Suns, as Caro told us earlier in the year. Welcome to you, football's first lady and the three-time Alf Brown Trophy medal winner and maybe a, a fourth on the way. Kane Corns, 300 game of four-time. Thanks, Archie. Best of the five-time. It's a five-time All-Australian in Matthew Lloyd. But we start with the Bulldogs, who if they win this weekend can still make the finals, but even with that said, have never been in a more precarious spot and the spotlight is squarely on the coach. Yeah, at a time when the CEO has said they expected not only to make finals this year, but do at least one better than last year. We'll, we'll go back to the Bulldogs hierarchy in a minute, but to the players first. I just feel there's, and I hear, there is some more disaffected players this year. We know what happened with Dunkley last year. We're not sure where Bailey Smith's future is. We're not sure how Adam Trelaw's feeling at the moment. Will Tim English accept a big offer to go and play for West Coast? And just a general dissatisfaction with the lack of cohesion and consistency in form and selection. Thank heavens Luke Beveridge has Marcus Bontempelli, who has been his great leader and his great supporter during all of this. We've talked about the leaving of uh, Rowan Smith, who I don't think Luke Beveridge wanted to lose, and a definite correction coming over Luke Beveridge's authority. And we heard today from the head of footy, Chris Grant, who spoke this morning on SEN. Is there any circumstance in which Luke Beveridge isn't the coach of the Bulldogs next season? No, no, not in not in my eyes or the club's eyes. No, no, we <clears throat> remain very, very bullish about that. You know, as far as we're concerned, there, there's no no um, chance that that will happen. Um, but you know, uh, depending on how the end of the season finishes out, we've got to be uh, very open and transparent with ourselves and make hard calls where we need to, um, and we'll do those if we need to. And Kane, you've been calling for hard calls. You assessed this as a wrong extension at the time back in December last year. You've now arrived at the position that you think change is needed. Yeah, absolutely, Hudgy. Change is needed now. Otherwise, it'll get ugly towards the, the first start of, of next season. And Luke Beveridge was asked about how he sees the list post-game yesterday, and, and this response was bizarre. Yeah, well, you guys, I mean, you can only assess our list based on what you see. Are you looking at our whole list? Are you looking at... Um, players who have been influential in the past, um, is your knowledge of the game, uh, I suppose, sophisticated enough to understand that it takes more than, um, you know, a handful? The one thing you know I'll never do is, is throw any of our players under the bus. Well, he sort of did, and clearly he's at odds with his CEO, who he must think isn't sophisticated enough, because here is Amit Bain speaking on SEN after round 16. So you think you've got a top four list right now, is the, is the bottom line? Yeah, we do. They haven't all played consistently at that level, and, you know, the analysis will show that. 
you know, some of the inconsistency that I spoke about at a team level obviously is mirrored by key individuals at, at different times. But if you look at the nucleus of that team, you build a side around that. So that's the right response. That's the response that you would expect. That's the, that's the right answer. And, and when a club and the coach is at odds of the strength of the list, Caro, it's going to get ugly from there. You chuck in the disharmony that you're referencing. You chuck in the numbers, Lordo, their inability to defend since 2016, the amount of goals they concede consecutively, and it's a waste. So, so, to, so they, they're going to say they're going to back him in, Hutchie, but... To be clear, you would... Terminate him as coach. Yes, I would. I think they need to make a hard call. He's been a great coach for the footy club. Put a statue of him up, put a, a plaque up at the Witten Oval and celebrate what he has done. But 2016 is a long time ago. And since then, they've just been an ordinary club. Yes, they went to a grand final, but their performance was was embarrassing on the day, really. And since then, it's all been downhill. And for anyone that's been watching, Lotto, this has been on the cards for a while. And unfortunately, it takes a loss like yesterday to highlight just how poor they're going. Yeah, I have a great respect for Meet Baines, the CEO, and also Chris Grant, the, the head of football. Uh, they're good football people, but they have to ask the hard questions. They do. And I think they... Are they hard enough? Uh, well, we'll find out uh, if they're hard enough. Well, it looks like they've do made a hard decision on Rowan Smith, Hutch. I, I just think do you, that... Do you agree with Kane? Or uh, you well, not well what, where I would get to that point, and, and players aren't everything, because because some players can be happy with the coach, some may of not course, be. Of but, but what I think they need to do is ask about why we get the inconsistency. Why, um, you know, if, is it enough for uh, everyone to change around Luke? Would that change the environment? Or is Luke the problem here with what you spoke about? A lot more Selection, players leave the Bulldogs, um, Matthew, than seen. leave other clubs. Oh, how many? How many are you saying? Oh, Apart from Dunkley, that's... There's been a list of premiership players from 2016, two or three every year. That but, but then they might say Jake Stringer was one who was a problem for Absolutely. them and things like and, that. And, so and there's, always, there's yeah. always reasons. But Dunkley was the big one because he seemed to represent the divide between the good guys and the bad guys. Yeah. And the, def the defenders team. and the non-defenders. Do you think the way that uh, some deliver. of the messaging, and we've just seen two examples of that, like post-game yesterday, pre-game, trepidation, on air. I mean, they played against he looks, West. He looked, like, he looked a bit lost. So think. that's the other thing, that the, the cracks that he's had at the media. And, that, and that's been, I guess, my criticism. I, I think as a senior coach, it is such an important job. The responsibility is there. You've got to be a great ambassador for your club. And unfortunately, and it might sound harsh, Luke has been a poor ambassador for his football club for a long time now, from, from the Tom Morris digs to the Damien Barrett digs in the media to questioning the tactics of Gold Coast players last year that were unfounded to the bizarre pre-season uh, launches and the messages there that no one can make any sense of to the grabs after the game yesterday. There's just so many examples where I believe he's been a poor ambassador for the club and with a job uh, with as much responsibility as this, it's not good enough. People would also say that about other premiership coaches, mm. though, Kane, that you can over, they can make mistakes, but they can still be good enough. I think to they be always the defended their players, yeah. though, Lordo. Yeah. I, I, th yeah. I feel no, like I don't think, he defends I, his players. Well, he did, that was he, the first he, time we've seen him, uh, I guess, question, push the narrative away from List. Mm. Like that's that's starting to mount up on him a little bit. And that, that's what yeah. I'm getting to. I think to understand if, if Chris and I want to dig hard enough, they'll get to the bottom for how much Luke's the problem or is it not Luke? And it's just that you can change the surroundings around Luke and they can get back to being what they should be. The best coaches have always been eccentric and need to be managed. Yeah, the, the best coaches you've always felt like they've got your back and they will, they will go to war for you in a football sense. I, I don't feel like the Western Bulldogs players right now would be feeling like the coach has got and their the back. And the best coaches had strong people around them and this is where Amit and Chris have to be really strong. Ironically, if the Cats rest as many players as some fear this weekend, they, they might yeah. fall into eighth and it comes back to your Essendon argument. Is that the mm. best thing for them right now? Well, I think the Giants making it would be the best thing for the finals, not the Western Bulldogs, but uh, Cameron and Hawkins may not play. And only seven days earlier, the West Coast lost by 100 points to Fremantle. If you, if you actually run the lens over this, it's unbelievable.